brethren in Christ, we give God the praise, we give him the thanks, honor and glory. Again, one more time that we can afford to come in his presence. And what I would like to do even before we get into our program is there are quite a lot of people and quite a lot of names that I would like, would like to call out. But it doesn't give me the right because I, I hate making enemies. You know, I may not call someone who is there and close to me and it can create a problem. And a good friend of mine warned me about that. So I'm here to thank everyone who made it their business to share with me through the years, and not just 2023, but through the years you have been with me. I want to let you all know that I truly appreciate the moments, the kind words, the thumbs up that you would share from time to time. And there are those who would make a comment and call me personally and say, well, what's up? I didn't understand this or that. That has made me even stronger and more committed to share with you these joys. There are those among us who are sick and they would brace even the discomforts from time to time to be with me, to share their moments, to share their time. Again, I want to say thank you. 2023 has not been the best year for most of us. We went through quite a lot of changes and trials in life. But out of it all, we can still say, and are we yet alive? We can still give praise and glory to the name of Jesus for his redeeming grace. To the elders who stand and is still standing by my side, Again, I said I don't want to be calling names, but you elders know who you are and you know how I feel about you in my heart. So I'm saying thank you again for the support. I'm saying thank you to even those who would be on the program and make no comment. I thank you because it shows up in numbers. So I'm just giving God praise. This is all I can do. And I ask you all, you know, to make your comments, share with me, help me to grow stronger that in 2024 we'll be able to do a greater and mightier work in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are dealing with a God according to Isaiah 48. He said, I have declared the former things, 48 and 3. He said, I have declared the former things from the beginning and they went forth out of my mouth and I shewed them. I did them suddenly and they came to pass. I am thanking God for some, some of the things. You know, one of the messages I was sharing with you all is from Revelation 17 through 21. I'm not going there this evening. But I'm seeing it come into life. And I now understand. I, I'm speaking to you all about inspiration. When God directs you, you may not understand at the same time. We, we have this in our lesson tonight. As we see Isaiah... You know, God declaring unto to Ahaz and Hezekiah and, you know, things that would not normally be. Things that naturally cannot happen. But he brought it to pass. And this word here from Isaiah 48 and 3 is really telling us how great God is. And the God that we serve is a God who knows the end from the beginning. So let us give him praise and let us ask as we go into 2024, we can foresee some of the things that is, is not going to be pleasant. We know it. We see it where the world is going. We see what is happening. When we see the laws of God being transformed to meet the, the needs of man rather than maintaining the standards of God because the things he said no to, we are saying yes. And the Bible says that. The time is going to come when we are going to say the wrong is right and the right is wrong. And we are seeing it, spiritual brothers and sisters. Let's open our eyes to what is before us. Do not close it, but trust God for his grace. Trust God for his mercy. Trust him for his love. He is God, and beside him there is no other. So I give God the praise. I give God the thanks, and I give him the honor. 
And we see what he is saying here. I just want to read this verse before we go into our lesson. Because I knew that the, thou art obstinate. This is just the continuation from 48. I'm reading verse 4. Because I knew that thou art obstinate. And thy neck is as iron, sinew, and thy brow as brass. We become so bold. We become so powerful in our wrongdoings that it don't mean anything to us anymore. The hearts are going cold. And when that begins to happen, let us watch. So again, I say, let us keep on the prayer wheel. The trials that we may face from time to time. There is still a question here that we need to ask. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world go free. I say to you, no, there is a cross for each and every one of us. As there was a cross for him. So let us seek to carry our cross. Whatever and however burdensome it may be, giving him honor, even under the burden of the cross. Eternal Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this moment, and I look to you for grace. As we go into this lesson, open our eyes and help us to understand. I would be bringing from three portions of scriptures today, which is Psalm 98, a portion of the book of Luke and we're going to delve into a bit of Isaiah and his writing in the almighty name of Jesus. So let us begin with Psalm 98. And this Psalm is carrying three, what I would like to, to say here, three groups. And you know it comes right back, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. This Psalm is carrying three groups of people that God had created to walk in his image and to walk in his likeness and to trust him for grace. As we go in here, I would like to deal with the beginning, the first group, which is from verse 1 through 3. Let us take a look together, and I will always ask you to do this. Don't just sit and listen to me. Walk with me in the word. And hear what it's saying here. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. He had done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm had gotten him the victory. The Lord had made known his salvation. His righteousness had he openly showed in the sight of all the heathens. He had remembered his mercy and his truth towards the house of Israel. All of the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of the Lord. And as we deal with Isaiah here, you know, in the book of Isaiah, the seventh chapter, from around the eleventh verse, he began to speak. And he speaks so powerfully to Ahaz and to the children of Ephraim. They would not ask him for anything but they would they would what you would do forsake and and abuse the nations around them or they those who were under their control god said it is a hard thing for you to ask me but you would abuse my people he said well i will show you i will share with you something that you had never seen before a virgin shall bring forth a child and they shall call his name Jesus. I know God is going to the extreme and he went to the extreme. Consider the forming of this world. Consider the separation of the waters. Consider the separation of the heavens. No man could do that. Not even the God of this world. And I say, when I say the God of this world, I mean Satan. Not even him. All he could do is to persecute to denigrate, to break down, and to kill if he can. But if you are in the Lord's hand, remember what he said when he challenged God pertaining to Job. He said, if only you would move that heads from around him. So I'm calling out to you, spiritual brothers and sisters. 
Stand in the gap wherein you are called. Stand doing the things that is acceptable. As you enter into 2024, it's a time when your whole salvation is going to be challenged. But remember, because of his love towards us, he challenged Ahab. And he said, I will show you a sign. I will give you a sign. It may be long. Even at that point, from that point in time, it took 700 years before our Lord entered this earthly realm. So when we begin to think about all of these things, it will help us to understand who God is and to look beyond the frailty of our lives, you know, and recognize that we are frail. And we don't know. And the only way that we can know is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we begin to look into these areas here and we see what he is doing, the Lord had made known his salvation, the sending of his son, his righteous, listen, his righteousness had openly shown in the sight of the heathens, even those who did not believe. A virgin shall bring forth a child. And we understand what it means to be a heathen. And then hearing someone speaking this sort of language. You will see him as a madman. This cannot be. And under natural circumstances. It cannot be. So I am saying to you here. Let us be able to give God the honor. Let us be able and be willing to give God the thanks. Because of his goodness towards us. And in this book here, I will show you that God looked out for his righteous people. I'm going to go to 2 Luke 30 and 31. I'm going to read for you. I'm not asking you to go there. I'm going to read for you in the almighty name of Jesus Christ. Verse 30 and 31. And hear what it says here. Which thou hast prepared. We're dealing with the promise. We're dealing with the O sing unto the Lord a new song, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. This is the 31st verse of the second chapter of Luke. A light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. A virgin shall bring forth a child, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. And the government of this world shall be upon his shoulders. But the joy here is that his kingdom shall have no end. We are speaking of salvation, family in the Lord. And this is what he is doing here. He remembered his mercies and his truth towards the house of Israel. The promise that he made to Jacob. The promise that he made to Abraham. And this is just the first area, the first group that God is dealing with us here. He said, all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. The angels cry now. The Maggies, while they were on the, tending their shepherds, while shepherds their flocks keeping. They're watching through the night. And there they heard the angels speaking of a new birth. A new king that is born. So when we begin to understand where we are going here, all the ends of the earth have not had, but have seen a salvation, the salvation of God. So as we begin to look into all of these areas here and to, to really give honor and glory and praise and thanks to the God of heaven, it is important for us to really stand firm and do what God desires us to do so that we can truly give him the praise. The honor and glory belongs to God. I want to read those three verses. Go oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. For he had done marvelously, marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm had gotten the victory. I love this. I love this because it's really speaking to us. The Lord had made known his salvation. His righteousness had he openly showed in the sight of the heathens. Even the heathen will cry out 
and give praise unto God. Even the heathens would acknowledge that this is not natural. And in one of the, 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 the good books, the, 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 at least the, the Quran, I, I, when I read there, it says Jesus had a supernatural birth. So as we begin to see God in all that he is doing, it is for us to truly give him the praise. And I'm calling out to you tonight. Let us give God the honor. Recognize that the God that we serve, regardless of the trials, I say to you, your timing is not yours. It's all about God's timing. It's when God is ready that he is going to make, un make known unto us the things that we need to know as we go in to 2024. There are some areas that I would like to go back on, but it will take too much time. So let's continue here. The second group, I'm reading from verse 4 through 6. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and with the voice of a psalm, with trumpets and sound of the cornet. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, the King. Let us think, church. Let us understand what God is saying here to us. When we can see this, when we can acknowledge this, and when we can truly give unto God the honor and the glory, we are going to be able to receive from him the good things. His promise is sure. There is nothing that he promised to us as his creation that he had never and will not fulfill. The prophecy might be long. The time might be long. But God is always on time. Hear what he says in Isaiah 49 and verse 6. And he said, Is it a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant? You must be prepared to, rise, to raise up the tribe of Judah and to restore the preserved of Israel. This is how he sees you. I want you. This is why you know. I'm, I'm hoping that you would go there and read these verses of scriptures. The preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. That thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. The whole earth should see and know and recognize you as a child of God. You are going to face many trials and tribulations because I did not understand. I, you know, I want to share with you, when I brought those messages on, on the book of Revelation from 17 through 21, the voice just speaking in my ear while I lay on my bed. Revelation 17 through 21. I came a second time. I had no choice but to get up. And today, when I'm seeing where we are, it's not very long. It was not very long. Maybe a year or so. You see, when I'm seeing where we are, and I heard one of my brothers saying unto me, I see you trying to, to, re, to bring the book of Revelation, but it was the, to the best of my ability that God had allowed me to do what I did. And I'm seeing it today. I'm seeing it today. Where men are changing. The powers that be are changing the laws of God. And saying the wrong is right. And the right is wrong. I want you to open your eyes. Because I'm limited with things that I can tell you. But I want you to open your eyes and begin to look and see where we are going. And see what is happening. But look at the love that God had for you and I. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribe of Jacob. The promise that I had made unto your father Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, I am upholding it. And to restore the preserved of Israel, you who were called from wherever you are, 
I'm not just speaking of what we so-called tribe of Israel. I'm speaking of you who are called, the called, the anointed. Those of you who God has, you know, sometimes you want to go this way, but God is leading you that way. You try to be stubborn and end up in a wrong, a place that you didn't like and you had no choice but to surrender. I'm speaking to you. You are considered the preserved of Israel. And when they came against our Lord according to the book of, of, of Revelation, they came to fight against him. But those who stood with him was considered also as the preserved, good and faithful. Let us hold on to the hem of his garment and let us walk in the guidance and in the instructions of the Lord, turning neither to the left nor to the right, regardless of what man may say to you. He said, I will give them for a light unto the Gentiles. When you are able to get up on the four o'clock morning, you know, and walk the streets, maybe in a blue dress with a head tie and sometimes you're bare feet and you're ringing that bell, you know, and you're telling others what is going to happen. And not very long after the situation happened within the village or the place where you may be, nobody is listening. We are not having this form of communication with the Holy Spirit today. And we need this. And the only way that this can be restored is, is by going back to where we were. And this is to depend on God through the guidance of his Holy Spirit. We have become, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, at Baptist ministers and ministers of the gospel. And I'm seeing, you know, it's a show now. It's no longer commitment. It's no longer the preserved of God. I am speaking here of the word of God. And to restore the preserved of Israel, to bring back these people who have gone astray. He said, I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. This is a serious calling. You know, we get so Facebook, you know, dazzled, we giddy. You know, we are so much. And sometimes I'm saying, what are we doing? Let us bring ourselves to the point whereby we can truly give something of worth. You know, it bothers us sometimes. But again, these, this is the two groups. One, God's people. Verse 1 through 3. I don't know if you have studied this psalm. This is God's people. Verse 1 through 3. And verse 4 through 6, he is hereby telling you, I have called you to be my people, to show my salvation throughout the whole earth. I wonder what Ezra was thinking about when he wrote this psalm. Where his mindset was. These are the questions that we need to ask ourselves today. So in order to be all that God wants us to be, we have to open our minds. He says, sing, verse 5, he says, sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and with the voice of a psalm, with the trumpet and the song of cornet, make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Yes, we are making some joyful noise, but is it spiritual? Yes, you hear some good rhythm, but I wonder if it's spiritually awakening. And this is what we have to ask. These are the questions that we have to ask ourselves. If we are God's people, whatever we do should be of some form of magnifying, bringing to light, bringing, bringing others to understand that there is a way beyond this, there is a life beyond this life. Get ready for the coming of the Lord. And this is what we should be saying, even in the manner of our dress code. So when we begin to say that, we would be able to truly give unto God the honor and the glory that is due unto his name. Remember, as he said, and as he walked the face of the earth, 
as he prepared those who would bring forth the great message of faith, he began to let them know it's not an easy way. He says it's not an easy way. And we need to hold on. He made it known unto us. The race is not for the swiftest. Neither the battle for the strong. But he that endures to the end. The salvation of the whole world. Is dependent upon us. Are we hearing from God? Today I'm speaking to you concerning the life of Isaiah. What are you leaving behind? What are your legacies? You build five buildings. You build this, you open up that. But what is the message? What is the message? And the message is important. Because the messenger played an important part. The question was, what come ye out to see? When you heard of John, what did you go out there to see? A reed shaking in the wilderness? He said, no. Even though he was the least in the kingdom, he was the greatest among all the prophets that lived because he was the messenger. You are called to be the messengers of God. And let us carry this message with faith and love, respecting one another in all that we may do and say, singing unto the Lord, with joys. Sometimes I look, you know, and I listen to the singing even in the ministry. We don't, we don't give our heart, you know. You, you're feeling for that connection and even though you're trying to pull them, they're just there on a flat note. But stand outside the door after church is over. These are the same people who cannot listen. You, you look you clog your ears because they're so loud. I want you to remember. Sometimes we go through things in life. But God is asking a question here. Can a woman forget her suckling child? That she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yeah. They may forget. Yet will I not forget thee. You know, he went so far in the book of, of Proverbs. He, he compared women, some of us, some women to be as the ostrich. Who he did not give wisdom. Remember that woman with Solomon in the temple. You know, when this woman, when Solomon sat on his throne on his, his first kingly duty. One saying, cut the child in half. And when the, the real mother said, no, give him to her. Solomon recognized. How are we walking today? Are we walking so that the salvation of God would be known in all the world? Are we walking modestly, church? These are some questions that, that we need to ask. Are we walking modest in the sight of God? Or how are we walking? wanting we have to be very wise we have to understand this promise that was was promised or prophesied was despised it says here thus said the lord the redeemer of israel and the holy one to him whom man despised to him whom the nation abhorreth Servants and rulers, kings, high priests, abhorred him. They pushed him aside. They did not want to hear the truth. When he said, my father's house is not going to be a, a marketplace, but it's going to be a house of prayer. Who gave you authority to say this? In like manner, when inspiration comes and the messages of faith are coming, we don't want to hear that. You overeat. You had a nightmare. I'm saying to you tonight. We are entering 2024. And the time has come for us to ask God. Speak Lord thy servant heareth. Speak Lord 
thy servant hear it. The time has come, you know, when our elders would, would they would sit down there and they're in their meditation and they're, they're focusing and you would hear them crying out, Speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. Open my eyes that I may see. No, when we read something here and we say, well, this is that, we're not asking God, but remember what God said. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Let us ask God. And church, when we begin to ask God for these things, we're going to recognize the true goodness of God. The whole earth, this is why he called us, I said, the two groups. One is for God's people, those of you who are called with the anointing. And we're hearing what's happening today. We're not going there either. So we have to know where we are. And the second group, the third group, as I'm, the second group is that the whole earth will know of the salvation of God, according to this. And we are, and how the first group, how would the, the second group know? Is that, listen, how the world would know? Is because the second group has to be making that joyful noise, continually pressing on in the name of Jesus. I'm pressing up on that highway and I'm looking for Jesus. Who will tell me whatever my troubles may be? The second group is verse 7 through 9. Hear what it says here. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. You know when we speak of the sea and we speak of water. We are speaking of nations and tongues. Anytime we deal with water according to the book of Revelation, it's speaking of water, nations, and tongues. And what are you saying here? Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. We had some problems here this week. As a matter of fact, yesterday, 30 foot waves. Wherever you are, just give God the praise. 30 foot waves and they are expecting this weekend to go 38 feet it's just coming in and taking what it wants from the land nature do not have I mean we do have no control over nature is that the, what we are speaking of here the third group is that all of nature will declare him as Lord and you wouldn't like how, it, how he is going to be sometimes. It's not going to be easy. So we have to be prepared to carry this message. We have to be ready to tell the world how sweet the name of Jesus' song. And I want to say to you, this is only in a believer's ear. He said, let the sea roar and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands let the hills be joyful together. We speak, or when we speak of the hills here, we're not speaking of the mountains. We're not speaking of the hill, San Fernando Hill or wherever it may be. We're speaking of those of us who stand in certain position. Those who have and carry certain anointing. Mothers, teachers, bishops, deacons. Those who are members of the fivefold ministry, you know, we have some names now that is not according to the Bible. Men bring them in. And I'm not going there. So we have to understand where we are. The prophets. What are you prophesying? And how are you prophesying? So many standing up and, and God tell them that it have five people inside here with $5,000 that is about to give. And when you give $5,000, he's going to give you 100%. Come on, let's stop that. You're lying. And somebody need to say it. God said he warned us. He said, woe be unto the shepherd that eat the fat of the lamb. And my sheep going empty, sleeping under the bridges, having nothing to eat, and you don't care about them. Let us stop that. Let us reach out with joy. 
I know that many may not be on the program tonight because, you know, you, wherever you are and you're going to your churches. But again, seek God's word. But even though you are not with me tonight, I know that you are going to be able to pull the program up at some given point in time and you are going to go over it. Why? Because we have built that relationship. What, this is the question here is, having a relationship with Bishop Xavier and not having a relationship with God, we are not doing anything. We just sitting down and watching my program when the night comes and not going back over the videos and trying to educate your mind, you are not doing anything yourself no good so there are times when you have to go back over these videos come off tiktok for a while come off facebook for a while a few minutes of the day go over the program comment on what i said even though it hurt your heart then go before god as long as it's true and the word is speaking to you go before god because all of nature is going to bless God. I tell you, yesterday, I'm looking at it just before I came here. 30 foot waves coming in and just taking, listen, taking vehicles and, and sending it down the streets. If you never see these things, you wouldn't understand that they, they are happening, church. Nature is speaking. And the time is now. You hear he said, let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be, a, <laughs> hills be joyful together. When we come before God, leave the problem on the outside. And let us worship the Lord. You know, some of us like to hear ourselves. So we will stand here and we will just talk and talk and talk. And that is not what God called us to do. If we are going to talk, let us speak the word of God. And it must make sense when we speak the word of God. He said before the Lord, the ninth verse, For he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world. And, with, and the people with equity. That is a key word there. The people with equity. It's not going to be easy. Because he, when he comes, when he comes, He's going to judge us. He's going to judge us. So let us seek to bring ourselves before God in beauty and holiness. Let us look at Jesus in preparation for the Passover. In preparation to worship God. As this young child entered into the world, something happened everything was done according to the listen to the precepts i want to say to you jesus came under the law jesus did not come under salvation or grace he came to usher grace in but jesus came under the law and all that was done it was done according to the law this is the reason, or hence the reason, he can afford to say, Father, it is finished. Of the work that you had given me to do, I have done it. John 17. And then he cried out, he said, glorify me now. With the glory that I had with you before the world was. So when we understand what he is saying here, when he prayed for us, he prayed for those whom he had called First, and then he said, I pray not for the world, you know, but I pray for those whom you have given me. I want to say to you, those of you, of those of us who have received certain assignments, let us do it with joy. Because there's a special prayer that went up for you. And a special prayer that went up for those whom you would bring to the cross. So there is an anointing. It's a pyramid setting, settings. And the more you bring to the cross, the more the Holy Spirit is going to add stars to your crown. We have a crown, you know, according to Paul, set up in glory for us. And that crown is not just how much money you had made the ministry. 
That crown is not just how many rooms you have. You know, I heard one minister said, he said his house has 40, 40 bedrooms. What are you doing? One man doing with 40 bedrooms in a house. He says some of the chandeliers that I have here, you can, your house, your house. Imagine the people who are paying tithes, you telling them that the house you're living in, it doesn't worth one of the chandeliers that I have in my house. How silly is that? Let us understand where we are. Let us understand what is happening. Jesus came when the day of bringing him to the church to be offered up and to be circumcised. Poor thing, his mother did not even have what it takes. She brought a dove. The symbol means so much to us because it's a very symbol that John saw lighting upon Jesus that he was able to say behold the Lamb of God one who came to save the world and even there and then he still had doubts while he was in prison he sent two of his disciples to find out I thou the Messiah so I am understanding where we are in life I am understanding that we are going to be faced with challenges. Even this Holy Ghost man who was just walking the street, cared nothing about anybody but listening to the message, an audio message from heaven to him, and he just repeating what he heard. Still did not believe that Jesus was really who he said he was. Even though he saw the witness that God had promised. So your doubts and your questions, again, I have to understand that. Even me, sometimes, as I told you, I could not understand the reason for Revelation 17 through 21. But as I see things uh, cascading down on us and the changes that is happening, and the laws of God that is changing in our very eyes. And some of us, we have become so compromising that we will say, well, 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 you know, we got to love everybody. We have to love everybody, but not the sin. So we have to be very wise here and understand what is happening. And because of this, Jesus came and the manner in which he came, he did not come just in grace, but he came under the law. To deliver us from the law to set us free from the law that was being used to oppress and I'm, I'm being very careful here he brought grace Moses came with the law but Jesus Christ came with grace and peace we must understand this I want to go to a little area here with Jesus was about to be circumcised to show you that he came under the law and as a baby and when it the, um, in the second chapter of Luke the 21st verse and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child his name was called Jesus he wasn't named before but on the day of his circumcision, the day of that covenant that God made with Abraham when he was at least 99 years, this is a covenant that I make with you, Abraham. Christ came making that same covenant with the Father in obedience to the word to be transformed from heathen to become now an Israelite. To become a Hebrew. Church is deep here. If we would take all these things into consideration. And recognize what Jesus and how he came and what he came giving to us. You see, this is when his name was called. In like manner, the only time Zechariah spoke is when... He named his son John, the forerunner. 
So what we're looking at here, when Jesus, which was the... Let me start this over. His name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Before he was conceived in the womb. You know, I, when I, I, I study the word incarnation of Christ, and it brings me back to that point where the angel said that holy thing. It's not natural. That holy thing that shall be placed in you shall be called the Son of God. Sometimes we move away. Before he was in the womb, the angel named him. And when the days of her purification, listen, and when the days of her purification, according to the law, observe what I'm saying here, according to the law of Moses was accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Followed every precept. He walked according to the law. He deviated not. For this reason he was able to, to speak to the Father and ask the Father, Father, the work that you have sent me to do is done. Glorify me now. That, think about what I'm going to say. He said, glorify me now with the glory that I had with you before the world was. He transcended into the womb of Mary took on the form of man, his very creation, and walked the face of the earth as he did. Is that too hard to understand? No, it's not. But a carnal mind cannot receive spiritual things. It's not easy to receive spiritual things according to the book of Corinthians. Because all we know is the flesh but we have to desire now for inspiration. We have to desire now for a communication. We have to be willing now to set up that line from earth to heaven. As Jacob did. When he laid on that rock. On his journey to his uncle Laban's house. And he had that communication. And he said, I saw the Lord. On the top of the ladder. And angels ascending and descending. We have to desire this. And if you ask, you shall receive. And I say to you, if you seek, you shall find. Sometimes we do not understand what is happening in life. Because we take life so simple. But I'm calling out to you tonight. To reach out. Remember. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. In other words, after that period where the woman came to the point of cleanliness, To be brought or to come before the priest or even to stand before the altar of God. Observe what the word says. When the days of her purification. When she was clean enough. To stand before the altar of God. Here is when she is going to present her soil. According to the law of Moses. And as it is written in the law. Of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And all that Mary had was a pair of turtle doves. And she brought it, and she gave all that she had 
You know, there were those who were bringing bullocks. There were those who were bringing goats. There were those who were bringing precious things. But all she had was a pair of turtle dove. But God, in his prophetic way of speaking and, and uniting our hearts and trying to bring us in line because he is seeking for a people that would be called by his name. He continued to speak through the Holy Ghost. And I'm saying to you here, the Holy Ghost was not given to everyone. The Holy Ghost had his office and his office was always there. But he could not communicate with us as we have that free access to the Holy Spirit today until he was sent by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He made that clear. He said it's expedient for me to go. Because if I didn't go the comforter, the spirit of truth will not come. To open your mind and to help you to understand and to, to take you within the streams of grace. Hopefully you would submit and you would accept the things that you cannot understand. So we have to know where we are going. We have to know what we are doing. And we have to know why. Because it's not according to intellectuality. It's not according to how, mag how powerful you are. It is not according to your education. It is not according to none of these things that we today are able to bless God. No, but it's simply because when we humble ourselves to give unto God the way we should, we are going to find wisdom. I want to read a verse of two, one or two verses of scripture here for you. And this is from the 32nd chapter of Job. I'm going to read from about the seventh verse. I said this. Should speak and multitude. I want to go a little higher up, the sixth verse. And Elihu, the son of Bachele, the Bozite, answered and said, I am a young man, and ye are very old, wherefore I was afraid, and does not show you my opinion. And this is why, this is what is happening to so many of us, you know. We are afraid to step up. When we see the wrong, we compromise. When we see the wrong, we stay quiet. But again, is it because of respect? This young man here was given respect to the elders. But I want you to hear what he is saying. But if the elders are not equipped to help us, then sometimes we have to give our opinion. And I have gone through that many a times. I sit back and I'm, I'm knowing it's wrong, but you know, I want to respect the elders so much that I don't want to say anything. But sometimes they're doing stupid things. And it reached this point, observe the sort of respect. So I'm telling you, don't go disrespecting your elders. Watch what the, one of the men of God did. These men who came, these three friends who came to commune with Job were righteous men. Men that were living righteously, even when they questioned Job and asked Job, listen, Job, what's going on with you? What it is you have done that you are going through such trials? What I'm saying to you today, you do not have to go through anything to face the trials of life. You do not have to do anyone anything to face or to be dis discredited by someone who is jealous of you. But look, let's go on in the lesson. He said, listen, he said, I said days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. Is this really so? No, not because you're big and old. Not because your head gray like mine. It doesn't mean that you have all this wisdom. Because God could be speaking to that five-year-old, but you are not willing. And you know something? The beauty here is that you, Samuel. Samuel was this little boy, 12 years old, within the temple. Eli, old, that his eyes grow so dim, he could hardly, but yet still. 
God is going to use Eli, Samuel, to bring Eli to a certain awakening that Eli was not ready to receive. He could not receive that. God had to speak through Samuel. He said, I said, days should speak and multitudes of years should teach wisdom. I want you to listen to these words. He said, but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So you could be talking here, you're big on all your power, including myself, but you're not hearing from God. You're not receiving any form of inspiration. You're not understanding the things of God. And as I said to you last week, you know, my godmother, this old lady, Mama Isla, you know, she, she see her name big as this church. She couldn't know. She did not know. But never lose her Lord. Never lose a baby. And I'm wondering today, you know, when you hear of that doctor in the hospital performing a cesarean, open the brain of that little child and then trying to force that child back. Where is it? And you're telling me, in, you know, I'm educated. Listen, the greatest educator and the greatest teacher is the Holy Spirit. And when he tells you how to operate, obey him because you are going to see results. Hezekiah, take those figs and rub them boils and you are going to be cured. What proof would you give me, Lord? To know that I will be. You see, we, we continue to doubt. And this is our problem. We need to seek God. Again, I read. I said, this is the young man speaking. The 8th verse of the 32nd chapter. The 7th verse, rather. He said, I said, days should speak. And multitude of years should teach wisdom. But it wasn't so. He said, but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Hear this ninth verse. Great men are not always wise. I didn't write this. Don't hold me ransom. Great men are not always wise. You could be carrying a big name. You could be this and that and the other, but have no wisdom. According to the Bible, Neither do the age understand judgment. Therefore I said, hearken to me. I also will show you my opinion. Behold, I waited for your words. I gave air to your reasoning. While ye search out what to say. Yea, I attend unto you. And behold, there was none of you that convinced Job. Or that answered his words. Sometimes it's not a big talk. It's not a big name, Dr. So and so, and Dr. So and you know, and this, that, and the other. It's not about that. It's about knowing God. It's about having a relationship with God. It's about receiving from God inspiration. And you will see here what inspiration does you see adoration the adoration now of simeon i want to read this for you we're coming down close he said behold there was a man i'm showing you what inspiration is all about i'm sure when you're not receiving this you're just coming as an educated educated man an aged man but you are, you're not receiving from god and the little child who is receiving you're ready to put them to sit down Let's think again. Let's understand. Listen. Because listen, your young men will dream, dream. And your children will prophesy, you know. If we are in that time, it's happening. So let us understand what we are saying. Look at inspiration here. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Inspiration now. 
And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ. Look how God is moved. Oh, you and this Holy Ghost thing, I don't want to hear about you. The word didn't say that, and the word didn't say this, but I'm listening to God and I'm seeing the word because the word is also speaking to me. John 6 and 63, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. We must be able to understand this. And look at the 27th verse. This same Simeon now. And he came by the spirit into the temple when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. Then he took him up in his arms and blessed God. He didn't bless the child. Observe what I'm trying to share with you here. He took the child up in his arms and blessed God. Lord God of Israel, thank you for allowing me. How many of us can do this when we stand up and we say, the Lord had shown this to me and look it's come to pass. How many of us, we, are, we have lost that and we need to bring ourselves back to this. We just sit in churches with our white dress and we look nice and it all starched and ironed down. But you're receiving nothing from God. As a matter of fact, even though you receive, you're afraid to get up. Let's think again where we are going. He blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, the coming of the promise, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people, Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at these saying which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own heart, Mary. You're going to stand up and watch them crucify the Son of Man. You're going to stand up and watch him cry out on that cross and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. These are the things. And Mary pondered all of these things in her heart. I want to show you what inspiration is all about. And if you're not receiving this, something is not right. Look at this woman. Hello. Anna. She was, listen. And there was one Anna, a prophetess of the daughters of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and eight years, which departed not from the temple, fasting and praying night and day. And she cared, listen, and she coming in the temple in that instance, giving thanks likewise unto God and speak of him to all them that look for redemption and speak of him to all those that look for redemption I am speaking to you today all in the name of Jesus Christ I'm not asking you for anything more than study the word I wish that you would make this this lesson, you would go over this lesson. You would revive this lesson. You would ask God for mercy. And you would ask him for guidance. And that you would be able to tell someone truly the power of inspiration. The power of inspiration. Let us ask God for guidance. I want to thank each and every one of you. I want to thank God most of all. You know, it was nice when Simeon, he did not thank. Listen, he didn't say, well, oh, I've seen the king. I'm holding the king. No, but he thanked God. And in thanking God, he is giving honor to the king. He is thanking God that I'm holding this child in my hand. Now my eyes have seen the salvation, the glory of thy people Israel. A light to lighten the Gentiles 
and to be the glory of listen when we understand all of these things and we begin to walk in the ways that god called us to walk we are going to find that peace love god trust god and give unto him the honor and the glory again i wish you all a happy new year a bright and prosperous new year i pray that all will be well and those of you who are going through trials and tribulations and those of you who are taking care of your loved ones who are not able to take care of themselves i say a special prayer for you tonight that god will bless you and as you reach out you know it reach a point lord jesus when i'm not able to do things with my hands when I'm not able to move for myself, Father, and you took care of me by someone else who were more mobile than I, I ask you to bless them. So those who are looking after the less fortunate, you wives whose husbands are going through situations in life, I pray for you that you would have the patience, that you would have the, the compassion. There are times you're going to get angry because in many cases, they, you know, they don't want to listen. They feel them as a boss. They know it all. I ask you to be patient. I ask you to be patient. May God bless and keep you May God make his face to shine upon you. Those of you who have families, pray for them. There are situations that we have to keep away from sometimes for the sake of peace. But prayer has no barrier. Prayer has no distance. It's instantly. So we give in God praise for each and every one of you under whatever situation you may be reach out and touch somebody and bless them in jesus name happy 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 new year may god bless and keep you all may he make his face to shine upon you may he give you that peace those of you who have the gift of healing do not use it for money use it to bless god those of you who have that gift of anointing when someone should come to you don't send them to somebody else sit and listen sit and listen and share a good word in the name of jesus be a peacemaker and let god have his way again i say happy new year one and all may god bless May God make his face to shine upon us and may he give us that peace, that peace which passeth all understanding, that peace which God alone can give. Good night, good night, and good night. Love you all.